So, hello. Welcome to the first episode of Paul and Isidore Living on East Um, Just to kick things off, we thought we would do a brief introduction to explain who we are, how we met, and why we are doing this. So, Isidore, I'm going to hand over to you. All right. Miigwech, miigwech, Paul. Isidore Toulouse Ndijnikaz, do Anishinaabe knows when, geiri nswe andeguk, dejiken miguk, nduk, nswe andeguk. Uh, Isidore Toulouse, shui go ndu jaganashi knows when. My name is Isidore Toulouse, um, known in the English world as Engl uh, Isidore Toulouse, and my Anishinaabe, my Indian name is nswe andeguk, known by the Anishinaabe spirits. Wonderful. Thank you. Miigwech, Isidore. Uh, so I'm Paul Greenberg. Uh, I was born and raised in Toronto, uh, went to the U.S. for university, um, and eventually through work uh, ended up being sent to a, a number of different places, first New York, a few other countries, but eventually to Tokyo, Japan, where I spent about 15 years. Just returned to Toronto uh, about two and a half years ago. Uh, I'm deeply, deeply interested in learning new languages. Uh, I speak seven, uh, and Anishinaabemowin, which I'm currently learning, is the eighth. Uh, it is an unbelievable journey so far, uh, and Isidore has been a tremendous mentor and guide through this process. Um, and then a couple of important disclaimers. Uh, I am not a professional linguist or an academic linguist. Um, I'm also not originally from the Anishinaabe community. But uh, I am deeply interested in discovering uh, and learning as much as I can uh, in the time that I have. Uh, and I'm definitely doing my best to approach all of this with uh, the utmost uh, respect. Um, so in terms of how we met, um, I'll, I'll tell my side of the story and, and Isidore can tell his. Um, basically, my journey with Anishinaabe started when I returned to Toronto a couple of years ago. Uh, and actually, I went to a, an art gallery opening where there was a, a land acknowledgement, uh, and it was done in Anishinaabe Uh I had never heard the language before, and in fact, I'd never heard of the language, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but when I heard it, it was a sound and just a feeling that I've never had ever before when I learned any language. I actually had goosebumps. And so I approached the person who had organized the event and asked them, what is this language? Who is this person who's speaking it? Where can I hear this? Um, and she told me uh, that this was Anishinaabe Muin, that it's still spoken. And this light went off with me, which is how, A, did I not know about this before? But B, how do I go find it and connect with it and, and learn about it? So I, I did some digging around and found a, a weekly class that I started here in Toronto. Uh, and that was good to get up to speed, but I quickly as I do with, with all learning languages, is I realized I needed to immerse myself. I needed to really hear actual people speaking it. So a friend of mine who, who I met here in Toronto uh, told me that I need to go up to his community, which is uh, Wikwemkong up in Manitoulin Island. So he made a phone call, put me in touch, and I got in my car and drove north and landed there, met some people, and had the most unbelievable experience you can possibly imagine. Uh, and that's where I first saw Isidore. Met him at a few uh, community events. Uh, really, really, uh, I was really impressed uh, with just him as a person and also his his obviously grasp and command of the language and his openness to share that with other people. Um, and so over the past few months, when I was sort of started to think about this idea of a, of a discussion like this, Isidore was the first and only name that came to mind. Uh, and I spent a few weeks wavering over whether I should call him and, and, and suggest this, um, thinking he might think I'm nuts. But anyway, I did. Uh, and he was very receptive. And, and here we are. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Well, I, I haven't really uh, put away the thought of you being nuts yet, but so. <laughs> 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 so um yeah maybe do you, do you recall because I, I remember the first time i met you was actually i think it was at a community event at the high school in wikwemkong right it was it was the language conference that took place there where nanotic was the guest speaker 
the yes. keynote speaker for that language yeah. conference that took place. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let, let's talk about why we're doing this. Um, if you want to go first, I mean, what what made you sort of think, a yes, this is a good idea, and yes, this guy who I think is nuts, I'll have some conversations with them online. <laughs> <laughs> well, why 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 I'd like to continue with this with this format? It's it it seems it seems. Um, the the new to me the new in thing podcasting the um the whole idea of talking about in generalities about the language about the Anishinaabemwin and having having you Paul as a sincere um motivated down to earth individual wanting to know more about the Anishinaabe Mwin language, about who we are as Anishinaabe people is really is really profound. It's really is really exciting for me to be able to share our values, our ways, our language to to you. And and my my thing is teach the language to anybody that wants to learn it. That's the way it should be. You're here in our country, you should be learning our language. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, okay, well, for me, very simply stated, um, one big motivator for me is I feel like I'm making up for lost time. I feel like it's a, a travesty that I didn't know about the language when I was young growing up here in Toronto. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to engage with it. I wasn't even aware that it existed. Um, the irony for me is that I traveled, I guess I've been to about 45 countries and very much focused on learning languages and a big part of that for me is always about seeing something new because every language always gives you something new a new way to see something a new way to think and looking to expand upon that and the irony is that i went all over the world looking for something that ultimately was a few hours away from where i grew up and i didn't even know it was there but now i do time is of the essence and i want to do everything i possibly can to learn as much as i can so that's that's my uh motivation all right, let's um, let's get into it. Uh, we'll we'll uh, follow the uh, the the main segments that we we did the last time, and I believe we'll kind of continue to do this as we go forward. Before that, though, I thought um, just given some recent events that it would be um, remiss of us not to acknowledge some of the recent news. Um, I think it's really really important, particularly with uh, the Canada Day holiday coming up. Um, and I just wanted to ask you, I know, you know, we talked before, uh, Isidore, about sometimes having some difficult questions and things to talk about. So hope it's okay if I ask you this question. Oh, sure. But yes. How, how do you feel as you've been reading about the 215 kids in Kamloops and now I guess it's 751 in Saskatchewan? Well, that was, that was the first, the 215 ones was very sad and emotional at that point. And then when I heard about just the other day about the 700 and some odd ones, I, I felt more, more hurt, more um, devastated because of what that Catholic church or whoever, whatever church denom denomination did to those children or those 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 uh, those bodies at at that time and it, 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 it it's just sick it's just sickening mm -hmm. it's sickening yeah i i um i'll tell you that of course it's sickening it's it's at a point now where we can't just there's no option now to you know, sweep this under the rug anymore and pretend that this hasn't happened you know it's in our faces um and and the thing that i have to say does give me some pause is I actually, after hearing about the 751, I started to think, okay, well, there were 215 in Kamloops, 751 at this other school in Saskatchewan. Um, you hear stories about other places as well. And I was just kind of curious, I, how many of these residential schools were there? And I actually went and looked it up. And it turns out that at least officially, there were 139. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math on that, and you just think, that for sure this has happened in other schools. This is a big number, you know? 
it's devastating. This is not just sort of a few bad apples here and there. This is a genocide. There's just no other way to look at it. Um, and it really feels to me that particularly with Canada Day coming up, I think we have to ask some tough questions uh, about ourselves, all of us. Um, and, and on that note, I wanted to ask, like, what, what, how do you look at Canada Day? Well, my thing with Canada Day, it's um, Canada Day is a celebration of the birth of Canada, the 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 beginning of Canada. Native people, Native people do not or should not have no reason to celebrate Canada Day because it has nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. We still recognize ourselves as North American, North American people that don't recognize that that Canadian border, that U.S. border, or whatever that, um, whatever you want to call that border. So, mm -hmm. uh, to me, Canada Day has no value to me mm -hmm. as a Anishinaabe person. Mm -hmm. I've been here for, I mean, my families have been here since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. We did not have those borders yeah. back in those days. So mm -hmm. why should we celebrate Canada Day? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, for me, it's interesting. I, of course, grew up celebrating it without knowing. Right. And, you know, it's propaganda and propaganda is very, very powerful. You know, the, the flag and the fireworks and sort of that's what it was this year though i'm definitely going to be approaching canada day very differently which is um this is just my own personal way of, of of dealing with it i'm going to spend the day focusing on the language and the reason is that the 215 the 751 and the countless others were persecuted for language for culture if you had a, a handbook for how to colonize a place the number one thing at the top of the list would be outlaw the language. It's the mm -hmm. first thing they always did everywhere because the language is what tells you who you are, right? Um, and so for me, I want to do something to continue to help revitalize the language and, and breathe, just continue to breathe life into it and keep it going. And I would actually challenge anyone who's listening to this, every Canadian, to learn a few words doesn't have to be, you know, you have to have to go learn all the language, but a few words to sort of, as an expression of, of um, fighting against what was taken away from those kids. I mean, not just their lives, but prior to that, for sure, they were beaten for speaking the language. For sure, they were persecuted for speaking the language. So as an act of defiance against it, let's, let's, let's really keep pushing to, to kind of continue to... Um, uh, to celebrate the language. Uh, and if anyone who is not familiar with the language wants to uh, to check out some words, I'm actually going to put a link to an online dictionary where you can look up some words. And that that's just the beginning. I guarantee you, if you look up five, you'll want to look up 10. If you look up 10, you'll want to look up 20, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, let's um, let's switch to the first segment, which is three, three questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to scroll down here and uh just before we dig into this uh we'll do this every time is ask each other questions and if anyone listening has a question that they would like to answer they can always leave it in the comments uh, of the video so isidore three questions for you you sort of uh, touched upon this a moment ago but how do you feel about non-indigenous people learning the language well i thought i find that that really really interesting because i've i've been teaching language for the last 30 38 some odd years and the majority of the students that i've taught that are non-native had a more interest in learning learning the language itself than the average anishinaabe person the non-native students seem to be more interested, seem to want to know more about, and uh, and and that's that's why I think that the the language should be taught to anybody and everybody that wants to learn it. You're in our country, you learn our language. That's one of the that's one of the things that um, should be should be in the uh, what do you call that when you first come to a country for immigrants? That should oh. be a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, that should be a question in there. What yeah. do you know about Native American people? Native, Native yeah, American. for sure. Well, do you, you know, know I, a Native American language? Yeah, you know, I agree with you on that. In our last conversation, I, I told you my perspective on this, which is 
if I get on a plane or a train or a car and I go to another country, uh, guaranteed within the first day, I know at least 10, 20 words just because I'm interested and I want to find out about the people who live in this place. Mm -hmm. So the epiphany for me when I came back here and I first heard Anishinaabe when I heard about it was like, why should this place be any different? Of course, I should learn the language of this place. It's, it's, it's obvious. And it should be an official language. And it should be offered as an option in curriculum in schools. Right. From my perspective. Um, okay. How and why did you decide to start teaching? And how do you go about teaching? <laughs> that's, a fu that's a funny, funny um, um, question. Because when I was, when I was in high school in Sault Ste. Marie, I took, I took a native studies course and it was a white guy teaching it. And I said to myself, and, and I barely passed a class with a, with a C, C minus or C plus. I said, oh, that, that doesn't make sense. We have our own people. We have our own people that can teach native studies about our people instead of learning from a white guy why 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 is that it just, it just didn't make sense so that's when i decided okay i think i think i'm going to become a teacher i'm mm -hmm. going to teach about my people who i am who we are as anishinaabe people i'm going to teach my language i'm going to teach our language so that's where my 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 teaching i think teaching um thought process mm -hmm. started why am I learning from this white guy, learning about my people, my culture, my ways from from a white guy? That's mm. I, I don't even remember his name. Mm -hmm. And and do you have any specific approach to teaching or or things that you kind of keep in mind in terms of how you how you teach? Oh yeah, of course. My, my, my sorry, go ahead. My 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 teaching approach when I teach language, when I teach my. My, the, the Anishinaabe Imwin, I stick to the simplicity of simple words at first. Mm -hmm. The simple words relating to everyday conversation, simple words to everyday use words that you use at home. And then learning to conjugate those various words. What are the various things that you associate to create those words? Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's where I, uh, that's, my, that's my teaching method to teaching language. Now, I also teach teachers how to teach. Mm -hmm. And I teach, I've been teaching for the last 29 years at Lakehead University, in the, the uh, Indigenous Language Program. Mm -hmm. And I teach teachers how to teach. So methods to teaching, uh, approaches to bilingual education, having the ways and means to be able to teach, to speak English and Anishinaabe Mwin. So those are those are the fundamental things that um, so get, getting to know my students, the the university students that I teach, get to know them, getting to know who they are is is the one of the most important aspects as as an instructor. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, all right. The next one was actually one that came out of our last uh, discussion, and at least a few people wanted to know um, if you have a favorite word or phrase in Anishinaabe Mwin. And and why why do you like it? And by the way, it could be more than one. <laughs> um, I I think. Oh, and, word, and by the way, word. one one thing I was just going to say is for this one. Whoops, for this one we should uh, maybe type it in here. Yeah, that that I'm would be sure. that would be a good idea because I I, I want to show you I want to show you the ways how one word yeah. tells you a whole sentence in the language. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go down here. And uh, hand over the screen to you. If you want to, do you see where I am in the, in the document? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to just uh, take it away with the stuff. Oh, I can, I can type in there? Yeah, you can just do it. It's not working. Uh, are, are you in the document? Um, well, I can see the document. Uh, okay. In oh, oh, I see. You're probably seeing the video. Okay. I'll tell you what. You tell me and I will type. All right, so you're going to type in the word ngikche, N-G-I-I, hyphen che, C-H-I. Oh, G-C-H-I, sorry. Okay. Hyphen, B-A-A, hyphen, P-A-A-N-G, 
hyphen D I B E hyphen Y A A N H. Okay. Ngik Chebapang de Bea. Ngik Chebapang de Bea. Ngik Chebapang de Bea. And Ngik Chebapang de Bea. And that means I hit him or her in the head really hard. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm very interested to know now <laughs> what it is that you like about this word. Well, okay. it's it's just it's just that kind of word, and and I just chose that word because I wanted to do a couple of endings. Okay. Now, when okay. you change when you change that ya, mm -hmm. de ya, ya, mm -hmm. y a a, mm -hmm. gik de mm -hmm. and let's change. Let's type the same word again. Okay. That, put that there, okay, and then we're and then change it. the ya to yig y i g, geek chipapang de beig. That means he or she hit me on the head really hard. Notice how the ya and the yig change to how he is he or she is the, doing the hitting now. Let's change, add the word again. Okay. Just give me, sorry, one second. I'm having a bit of an issue with my screen here. Make sure this works. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And then take out the ya mm -hmm. and type in B I N I hyphen G O O K. Okay. That one means. Um, they hit me in the head really hard. Okay. All right. And then another one, same thing, do the same thing. Okay. Oh, sorry. Right. And you're at Y A A K. Okay. Meaning I hit them in the head really hard. So those types of conjugating words are makes what the makes makes the language fun to be able to understand mm -hmm. how when you're conjugating how part of that word stays the same. Look at gikchaba pang de debe. Gikchaba pang debe is the same all the way down. Mm -hmm. The only thing that changes is the suffix gikchaba pang debe Okay, so a couple of things. Yes. Um, I the the ingi is basically the thing that indicates it's a it's a past tense, right? It's a past tense, right? And then the gichi is with the really the big you know, the, the, the big bigger really. Uh huh. And then the ba. The ba is the action that is taking place. Okay. And then the pang, I guess, is 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 the hit. The pounding, yes. And then the bear is in the head. The bear is the head, yes. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So there were some questions for me. Maybe I'll hand these over. Yes. To you. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. So question for you, Paul. Yes. As a speaker of seven languages, what tips do you have for language learners? Okay. So. Um, one of the things I, I want to say stay up front is it really depends on what you are trying to get out of learning the language. People have learned languages for different reasons, right? So one is you're going to be traveling somewhere for two weeks and you need survival language. Another, maybe on the other extreme, you are an indigenous person who maybe didn't grow up with Anishinaabe, but you're trying to reclaim some of your culture. Those are obviously very, very different scenarios, but, um, in general, the things that I found have worked for me when I need to sort of dig into a language is first, really be clear about what are my objectives and break those down into achievable things. Because when you sort of start with this, I'm gonna learn this language, that can be hugely overwhelming and make it very difficult to kind of get the wheel turning. So break down something very specific that you wanna achieve. So. For instance, it may be, you know what, I want to just be able to have a basic conversation with someone. 
Um, I want to be able to uh, go to the store and buy something, you know, some, something very specific that's relevant for you and actually has some meaning. And that relevant piece is really important because when it is relevant, your motivation obviously goes up significantly as opposed to something that doesn't really have any meaning for you. The second is what I call adopt the mentality of a child. If you watch a child who's just learning how to speak, one of the things you'll find is they don't spend a lot of time on grammar or pronunciation. They focus on what they need, you know, and um, they're not afraid to make mistakes. They just, you know, for them, it's, it's a hyper focus on objectives. Like I'm hungry, you know, I just pooped. Um, I, where's my toy? You know, so things that are really, really, really important to them and they'll keep trying and, and eventually iterate until they get to a point where they know that they're communicating what it is they're trying to say. I think if you can take that mentality of not being ashamed or embarrassed about making mistakes, just trying, just trying to get something out and, and communicate and, and convey, that's, that's how you start. The next one is focus on what is essential. So again, rather than thinking you have to learn the entire language in one fell swoop, the, the, the amount that you actually need of a whole language to communicate and sort of do most things is actually relatively small. Focus on that stuff. Just focus on what's really, really important. Um, and then the other is maximize your exposure to the language. And what I mean is, you know, it sometimes can feel like, you know, going to the gym. You know, you've got to like get the motivation every week to keep going and do a regular um, schedule. But what I find is, you know, you can of course do that, but if, if that is too much pressure or that's hard to kind of maintain, every day, just listen to a recording, read a, you know, a, a, a little article, um, talk to yourself, which is something that I do a lot to practice, you know, um, go listen to some people, hang out um, in, a, in a, an area where you know people are gonna be speaking the language and just feel it. Turn on the TV if it happens to be on TV, uh, watch a video doesn't matter. Just every day, just keep having touch points with it. And it doesn't mean that you need necessarily to, to learn and internalize everything, but there is a bit of an osmotic effect, you know, where just by osmosis and surrounding yourself with the language, it starts to seep in. Um, and then the last really important thing I'll just say is to meet the language on its own terms. If you go and try and always map back to the language that you're coming from, uh, you're going to quickly run into walls where the mapping just doesn't work. So uh, one example I have here is J Japanese. They say, or at least I've been told, that about 80% of communication is unspoken and 20% is actually spoken. So if you're used to articulating every single thing you want to, you know, say, uh, you're gonna you're gonna run into trouble. So you have to shift your mindset and start to focus more on listening, understanding the context before you speak than you would normally in English, for instance. Uh, with Anishinaabe one, one of the things that I found really interesting, and it's only really recently I've started to kind of get my head around this, is it's an oral language. So um, that also has implications. And of course, writing as we've been doing is a helpful tool, but I try to focus more on listening and the words rather than fussing over the precise spelling over every little thing and you know, the, the technicalities of that and really try and approach it as a language that's meant to be spoken as opposed to written. So that's that one. Well, that's good. And the second question, compare and contrast in Nishinaabe and, and um, Japanese. Yeah, so, so this was a question actually that came from someone who listened to a previous discussion of ours. Um, you know, I think when I first started learning Anishinaabe when Japanese tended to come up in my mind a lot because of the languages I speak, it's the only one that has at least some similarities. Although the, the deeper I've gone into it, I realized they're, they're fundamentally different and they're, they're quite different, but there are some interesting things. So the approach to gender is one as, as you of course know, Isidore in, in Anishinaabe when the gender is not expressed in terms of sex, male and female, but in terms of animate and inanimate. And that's how you sort of divide the world and see the world. Right. Um, and words reflect whether something is animate or inanimate. Interestingly, Japanese has the same thing. And it's the first language that I've come across that, uh, that has that. Um, not to the same degree and not through all of the words, but for example, just uh, as a simple example, the, the verb to be, 
if you're talking about something that's living, the verb to be is imas. But if you're talking about to be related to something that's not living, then it's arimas. And that distinction is built in. So you're actually thinking, always thinking, is this living or not living and which word you should choose based on that. Mm -hmm. So that's something similar. The other thing that was similar when this, this I think is not exclusive to Anishinaabe one in Japanese, but um, blue and green traditionally in Japanese is one word to express both. And I, I understand that Anishinaabe one a long time ago was the same thing. It was one word which was expressing blue and green. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and then the last one is numbers, which is I'd actually like to do an episode with you on numbers because there are some similarities there, which is there's a, a certain, I'm not going to go into the detail now, but there's a certain systematic approach to numbers, which makes a lot of sense and has a logic, a lot of logic to it, which mm -hmm. Japanese does, which is one of the reasons why actually math, in my view, is easier in Japanese than in English. But I also noticed that this same systematic approach exists in Anishinaabe one, very interestingly. Oh, oh. Contrasting to English. But let's leave that for another episode. We can we can come back right. to that. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. So the next question, what are you going to do with the language going forward? Yeah, this was this was also a question from someone who listened to our discussion. Um, you know, I think for me at this point, uh, I don't have any big agenda. But the main thing is, is largely a personal journey of just opening my mind, seeing newer shapes, newer colors, things that I never conceived of before, which is the exciting part about languages in general, but especially Anishinaabe one. The other thing I noticed is the language as it's in me, I find myself becoming softer and more empathetic and just there's something about it that that. I don't know, it, 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 it has a kind of this resonating feel, you know, in terms of how it influences your mind. So I want more of that. Um, and then I also would like to introduce this really important and beautiful language to other people. Um, okay, let's uh, shift to in the language. So what we're gonna do is uh, Beverly, who uh, you know, and who I stayed with in Wikwem Kong, uh, has been sending me messages in Facebook in the language. And so we're going to listen to one now. Um, you can follow along by looking at the Anishinaabe one here. And then we'll, uh, the English translation is below. Um, and then we can talk about some of the words that she uses. So let me just go back to the beginning. Ani, Paul. What time do you get? Ning megonda sokmuk. Natural groceries and kade. Nish gimnes and name. Best chicken. We can't get one of Jacasia. Nahau, Pamamino. Okay, so let's talk about some of the words. So we start with Ani Paul and Gwetani Minagishgad. So you were telling me earlier that Gwetani is kind of like a. Um, expressing such or or such a great or such a wonderful, right? Yeah, gwet, gwet tane would be very much so. You could say mm -hmm. gwet gwet. It is so delicious. Yes. Gwet tane, gwet tane me. My water tastes so good, so delicious. Mm -hmm. Gwet tane, okay? Okay. And then the mina gizigad. Gizigad is a day, right? Yes. And then mina or minol is good. Mena is good, yes. So it's such a good day. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful day. Okay. And then Ning Megwanda Nsuakmak. So um I know that the NG at the end of Ning is usually I guess what they call the locative, like it's in the place or in the location. Right. Right. So ni ni ing. Mm -hmm. Ni ing at that location. Ni ing. Mm -hmm. Ni ing. And, and then Megwa. Megwa is right now at this time. Okay, and then in da da a means I'm at da a. Okay. And then in Sowakamag is really cool for me because you know finding out the names of these places you know in the original language is super interesting. So that's uh, Sudbury, right? Yes, and uh, and Sowakamag means where the where the three roads meet. Sowakamag. Oh. 
Awesome. So, three. So, so, awesome. come on. Very, very cool. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So, ngiba ngish ngish penajige jin da gichi dawe gamegon. So, uh, talk to me about ngiba ngish penajige. Ngiba ba tells you it's the the thing of of an event that you did so and so. Ngiba mm -hmm. ngiba mase. I went for a walk. Ngiba mm -hmm. mipto. I went for a run. Ngiba mm -hmm. bigis. I went for a swim. Ngiba mm -hmm. we sin. I went eating around at different locations. So she went ngiba gish meaning she went shopping around at that at that store, looking mm -hmm. at different things, but specifically looking for that. Okay. Uh, and and then, and then tell me about gish binajige. You were saying like inside that word, what does it literally mean? Gish binajige, the, the word literally stands for that you're going, paying for this and that. Giba gish binadun. Gish binajige, gish binadun. Okay. All right. And then jinda is uh, here. Jinda is here, yes. And then I know gichi, which we've seen a lot, means big. Yeah, big, huge, mm -hmm. something big, extravagant. And then tell me about uh, Dawe Gamagon. Dawe, game, dawe, oh, dawe comes from to sell or trade. Mm -hmm. Dawe. I'm of the Odawe nation. Odawe. Mm -hmm. It's the same word as Ottawa, O T T A W A. It's the same word. We, we It just mm -hmm. changed through through time mm -hmm. to, to accommodate the English, um, English word, o mm -hmm. Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Odawe, to mm -hmm. sell or trade. Okay. And then the gamig tells you it's the building, Odawe Gamig. And then the o -O -N -G is the locative, making it the location mm -hmm. in, at, on, or to the. Okay, so ingi ba gishpinajige jinda gichi dawe gamegong is uh, I went shopping here at the big store. Right. And then she says national groceries jinkade, and jinkade means it's called or it's named. Yes, right? it's, it's called because it's an inanimate object. Got it. Okay. So if um, I was introducing if I was introducing you, I would say Paul Maba Jinkazo. Mm -hmm. Jinkade Jinkazo. Got it. So coming back to the animate inanimate. Yes. Jinkazo would be animate. Animate. Because this is inanimate, we say jinkade. Right. Perfect. Okay. Tell me about this next one. This is quite a quite a mouthful. Ni ish. Ni ish ngimnezin. So ni ish tells you it's um, that particular thing. Ni ish. Ni ish for that that item. Ni ish. Ni ish ngimnezin. Minezin is something that I needed. Minezin. Okay. And then ni yeah. is the same as ni ish. It's mm -hmm. just cut short. Ni i. Mbis jigan. Mbis jigan is something that rises. Mbis mm -hmm. jigan. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I was to say, Paul, mbinan do pwin, that means lift the table. Mbinan. Mm -hmm. So mbis jigan is the action of something that lifts, that rises. Mbis mm -hmm. jigan. So mm -hmm. in this case, she's talking about uh, baking powder or yeast. Mm -hmm. And then we scon uh, I like this yeah. word a lot, by the way. Hey, we sconkean, sconkean. Mm -hmm. We sconkean for me to to make scone. Mm -hmm. And she's so, she's using that scone as as yeah. I I, I don't believe scone is a Anishinaabe word. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's kind of like a Old uh, English. Like, yeah, Old English, right? And, yes. And then and then the we is basically something that I will do or I going to do right yes future tense future tense so we scone keyang is i'm going to make scone right and then the wa nabjikazian yes one nabjikazian means what i am going to use one nabjikazian okay is there anything you can say about the nabjikazian that word uh nabjikazian if i was to say um one nabjikazian one akazian nakazian Manda, Manda Mujwagan, Nabjikazan. Mm. 
So mm -hmm. here I'm asking you, use this pair of scissors. Nabjakazan. Manda Mujogan Nabjakazan. So what Nabjakaz Ya tells you it's me that is going to make use of it. So in this case, that yeast that she's going to make use of to make her scone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the last one, Nahal Bama Minwa. Maybe you can just tell a little bit about those words. All right, Nahal is just a reference to, okay, mm -hmm. Bama Minwa, later, Bama mm -hmm. Minwa, and later, so ba later Bama, again. And if I understand correctly, Bama is actually a shortened version of Bama P. Right, right Bama P. Bama P until until next time. Next time. Okay. Bama P. And then, and then Minwa, I guess, is again or another. Again time? or and. In this case, it means again. Okay, got it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. That's awesome. I'm gonna play her a recording one more time so we can look at what we just discussed. Ani Paul. What time nigi you got? Ning Megonda Sokmok. Natural groceries in Kade. Nish Gimnes and Nim Bischigan. We can't get one of Jacasia. Now, Pamamino. Okay, so here's what we're going to do I'm going to send Beverly a message, and you and I worked this out before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what I want to tell her is hello, Bev. It is a really beautiful day here in Toronto, too. How did your scones turn out? Why did you travel? Why did you have to travel one and a half hours to get yeast? Don't they have yeast at Andy's? And so for anyone who's listening doesn't sort of fully grasp some of the references there, it's about one and a half hours from Wikwemkong to Sudbury to go shopping. And Andy's, I guess, is the main grocery store on uh, in Wikwemkong, right? Right. Yeah. So um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot here, and this is what I'm gonna record after and send it to Beverly, um, and then we'll next time listen to what she responds. Okay. Right, that'd be interesting. All right, so I'm gonna say Ani Bev, Jinda gichi odenan guetani mina gizga gewi. Wenishka jinag jinagzawad gudos konag. Ani dash ingod ingodi magisoan shi apta. Enji mida banguyen, we nanad in Bishigan. Gawi nabesi, Bishigan ode andis. So let's talk about some of these words. So uh, in the first one, jin that we already saw was here, and then gachi odenan guetani minagi jigad gewi. This is basically repeating back to her what she said to me. The one difference, I guess, is that we have gachi odenan, which means the big city, or in right. the big city, I guess, yep. uh, which means Toronto. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the next one. So Wenishka Jinagazoad Gdos Konak. Maybe you can talk about those words and what they mean. Well, the, when you're when you're saying when you're saying Wenishka Jinagazoad Gdos Konak, in 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 English it says, "How did your scones turn out?" Mm -hmm. In this case, we're saying, "What did your scones look like?" Jinagazoad, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. meaning. When when you look at them, what did they look like? Kashanagzawad. Mm -hmm. So it means the same thing as how did they turn out? When mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. And then the the uwad at the end um is because it's uh plural. Plural, right? Yeah. And then the gado is your. Your gado makes it your. Yes. And then the ag at the end of skonag makes it plural. Makes it plural also. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's look at the next one. So the anish dash. So right. talk to me about these ones. So ani dash makes it makes it why ani dash why ngud bagi swan shaapta enji midaban goyen meaning why are you traveling for one and a half hours ngud mm -hmm. bagi swan shaapta ngud bagi swan is one hour. The buggy swan makes it the clock. Mm -hmm. She opta is the half. Mm -hmm. So basically, she is in a way end, and then opta is a half. Right. Right. Okay. And then ng is. Ng makes it the location of. So in this case, at that location that she's traveling to, ng midaban guyin. 
-hmm. Why are you traveling? Why are you driving mm -hmm. to that location for half an hour or uh, hour and a half? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we nanad. We nanad. In this case, because the Bisijigan is an animate object, mm -hmm. we nanad, meaning mm -hmm. to go and get. Okay. okay. We nanad Bisijigan. What would it be if it was animate? What would you say in that case? Um, we nod in. We nod in. Okay. Uh, we nod in. Okay. And then this is kind of an interesting one. So the gawi si in the next one, what does that mean? When you see gawi and si together? When you put them together, it tells you that it did not happen. It's mm -hmm. not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that next sentence, gawi na. Na is the question. Gawi mm -hmm. na. Mm -hmm. BC, and that should be BI. BC. Gawina BC. The C reinforces that Gawi that it did not happen. Gawina BC, Miss Jigan, U de Andes. Meaning, does, does the Andes store, does not, does, does it not have that animate object, mm -hmm. that, that baking powder or yeast? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the ode basically means over there. So it's yes, like, over there, ode don't, Andes. Don't they have uh, yeast or baking powder over there at Andes? Right, right, right. Okay, so can I ask you, just because I'm going to need this for my own practice when I record it for Bev, can you just say this message? Uh, I certainly can. Okay. Ani Bev, jinda kche ude nang gwet talim nagi jgat kewi. When is Gajanag Zewad Gduskanak? Ani dash good buggy swan sheapta. Engine medawan goin, we nanat mbisijigan. Kawina bisi mbisijigan ude andies. Okay, miigwech. I will do my best. I will <laughs> send this to Bev and then next time we'll see what she responds. Okay. Right, right. All right, so let's shift to the whoops to the last segment, which is in the words. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to look at a couple of words. So these ones, um, following on our last discussion, um, are still sort of uh, in the theme of where you are or the kind of what's around you, just trying to kind of orient that way. So let's start with wigwam. What, what does that mean, if you were to translate that to English? Well, I've never really thought about it until I've seen the word you, that you you sent me. I've mm -hmm. never really deciphered the word wigwam, mm -hmm. but but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. We wigwam coming from the word wigwas. That's how our our homes were built long ago because mm -hmm. we we were a nomadic people that we traveled from one location to the other. Mm -hmm. So we would just peel off the birch bark to make to make our shelter. Wigwam, wigwam. Coming from the word wigwas, and then the guam, and it, it it makes a lot of sense that if we if I said the word minunguam mina, there's the mina in there, mina the good minunguam meaning I am sleeping well, minunguam. So wigwam, it's a location, it's a place where um, you you have you have your good sleep. So a house, right? Yeah, so it becomes a house. Yes. Okay, um, and Udena. Udena, uh, uh, yes, I, I love this word, Ude. Mm -hmm. the, the word Ude comes from the heart, Ude, Ude. Some places you'll just hear the word De, De, D-E, Ude, all right? Mm -hmm. Meaning when you go, when you go into town, you're, you're at the heart of the location, the heart mm -hmm. of that area. Ude Nang, the location where the hustle and bustle takes place, the heart of it. Ude Nang. Okay. And then we've seen the word Gachi sometimes. So yes, what we did we that in your story. Gachi Ude Nang, that would make it the big, the big, the big town, the big, the big heart town, which we call Toronto. Gachi Ude Nang. Okay, and then gamig uh, we had. So this, uh, I think you said it means building. Yes, gamig so means building. What are some examples of, of well, 
let's uh, create a few words here. We can write akuzigamig, akuzigamig, which becomes a hospital. Okay, and I'm going to actually do here, which is akuze means. Akuze means to be sick. He or she is sick. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Next, you can write um, anamegamig. Okay. How do I spell that one? A N A M E G A M I G, which is a church okay. or a prayer building. May is prayer. Right? And the may means prayer. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, we also had earlier this one that uh, Bev said to us, right? She right. The, this one is store. Store. Dawe, you were saying? Dawe means to sell or trade. Okay. What about the restaurant? Shange. Shange gamig. Shange is, okay, it's restaurant. Shange is to share food. Nice. Or he, she shares food. It's, it's, yeah. You might as well be consistent. He, yeah. she shares food. Okay. And the other one, he, she sells or trades. Yeah. And he, she prays. Okay. Maybe just one more. Um, what about uh, band office? Oh, ogima, uh, ogima gamig. Ogima or just gima? Uh, let's leave it gima, gima gamig. The band office on the reservation. Right. And then gima. Gima. Well, people know it as the word for chief, but it doesn't That's, really mean chief. It literally means he who is counted. In the olden days, our people, when they did their elections, you would count the number of people that were standing behind you. So let's say you and I were running for, for chief. Mm -hmm. So all of the members that wanted to vote for me, they would stand behind me. All of the members that wanted to vote for you would stand behind you. Mm -hmm. So And then there was the people that did the counting. Ogima, ogima, ogima wog, meaning the number of people that were counted that were standing behind me, the number mm -hmm. of people that were counted standing behind you, mm -hmm. meaning they were counted. So just to make things exciting, I got the most numbers. All right? Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. Um, okay. Uh, we have come to the end of the episode. Well, that is exciting. The hour went by so fast. It went by very fast. So uh, I look forward to our next conversation. Alrighty. Okay. Thank Aho. you, Zidor. Bamapi. Naha, bamapi.